yo, something happened with this, man. Anyway, J.J. Reddick was up for a head coach, uh, supposedly a head coaching position yeah. in with the Toronto Raptors. Now, I think someone like you, someone like Dime, you guys are super into old school, respect the old school. And J.J. Reddick now, he's like, he's become the, the icon of you guys were plumbers back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I don't think- even think it's that. I don't. You know what's crazy? I don't even think it's that because when I heard somebody of that age say that, it's like, bro, like, you're not the youngest guy. Like, you're trying to be super modernist. I think he your age, Fabian, no disrespect to you. But it's more so, like, I said it before with Jamon Green. It ain't even like the, oh, I'm going the super modernist route. It's more so they like the J.J. Reddicks, the Richard Jeffersons, the Draymond Greens. They like the liaison between – the people who weren't good enough to make it to the league and the people that are ass amongst their peers in the league. Right. So, so that's, that's how, that's the thing I'm taking. That's, that's the route I think he, uh he, he portrays. And I don't, like I said before in the chat, what he's saying is not earth shattering knowledge. Like this is pretty much known stuff. What is he really giving us some, some detail, play-by-play situations that happen in the locker room, yes, but is he really, like, (laughs) shattering the earth with what he's saying? I don't think so at all. And he's just as good as the people he's on the show with. Like, you keep debating with Stephen A. Smith. That doesn't show me that you're smart at all. Skip Skip Bayless left Stephen A. Smith, started his own show, and built Shannon Sharp Sharp up. I get – now, Skip Bayless, he has his cons, but he – was 40 years in a journalism business. So you being on TV with a success in Stephen A. Smith, let's keep it a book. J.J. Reddick is not, <laughs> it's not the star of that show. It's Stephen A. Smith. You being on that show does not give you any credentials to be a head coach. And it's certainly not your professional career. But I don't think that's what that's what it is for me. Like, I just think he's, a, he's clearly smart. He's eloquent. Um, him being on that show to me is what you're saying, though. The Draymonds of the world, they wanted a representative up there because it was – what's my man's name? Not my man. This guy uh, – here's my man, uh, Mad Dog. Mad Dog, yep. Okay, Mad Dog is the guy who, who helped create all of this. Like, nobody understands that part. Talk New York City talk radio, he was that. Shock jock, yeah. Back yeah. Then. He's mm-hmm. that. It was him. It was Mad Dog Russo and the other guy of uh, uh not Frank, Mike, Mike Fran- Mike Francesca. I forgot to say. Yeah, that. one of them, the Mike and Mike show, one of those guys. No, 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 no. Not Mike oh. and Mike, Mike uh Francesa. Mike uh-huh. Francesa and Mad Dog were New York City radio. They were the, they mm. were they were sports talk radio. They create they helped create this whole wave. Like what okay. Stephen A. Smith does, they do that. The way they sound, the way we sound as New York fans, that's how they would sound. Imagine them on the radio in the 90s. Facts, crazy. So, yeah. So nobody, so there was no internet. So he, I think you have that with somebody like he goes crazy overboard, Mad Dog. What is he talking about sometimes, right? Facts. And I think JJ Reddick is is there to represent that, and he went overboard because you can see when it gets too emotional. Yeah. And I, but the the I don't think that's why he should be discounted as a head coach. You know what I mean? Like he's just. I mean, uh, I it's mean, an opinion. Like you're going other, back and forth. Let's let's yeah. I mean, I I. I just see like when other other candidates, I mean, he he's asked out. I mean, look at Joe Mazzula. Joe Mazzula out of college. I'm I i do not I don't really know his background like that, but I certainly I went I'm, to West I'm, Virginia. I'm, uh my point was you don't have to necessarily be a professional player to have a good basketball mind. Like there's so many other people with different approaches to the game that can that can show something like what what is jj reddick said to give off the impression that what he's going to do is really going to turn the toronto raptors around hypothetically what because it's easy to tank anybody anybody can tank right literally any coach can tank what can you do to keep them in playoff contention like i was talking about earlier yeah no. I don't think I think it's about sticking to the plan. I don't think it's about it, whatever the Toronto Raptors plan is, the basketball plan. If we got a guy so there, right. I, yeah. yeah, 
It's yeah. like Greg Popovich, like they're tanking, but I think there's a way to do it. They're tanking mm-hmm. really well, where I think they're still developing them kids, man. They, they look yeah. good True. still. I've seen so yeah, that's what look. that's what the Raptors need to do because uh again, the only way the Raptors gonna get as good as they were with Kawhi is if they do it through the draft or the trades. They're not getting a free agent to come to Canada. Cause like we talked about Nick Nurse was really uh he was a rookie coach. Yeah. So I don't like he's JJ Reddick would not be walking into that because they have a fire sale going on in Toronto, right? Mm-hmm. But again, I think it's gonna like I just find it amazing how divided people are over JJ Reddick because I get it. Like Dom Dropper, you know how Dom is. He could, yeah, uh, he got, he got some got of this. I mean, I had a uh, I think I told you this. I had a uh, I had a run in with JJ. He came on my page saying something, yeah, but yeah. it's a little more personal for me, but yeah, yeah. But I know his mentality. Like I think when he, him and the way him and Richard Jefferson go back and forth, I like him. I just feel like you, yeah. he likes to debate. I think he's just one of us, to be honest with you. He has too yeah. much of us in him because he yeah. just he has a point of view. So, yeah. but to be a head coach, like they overlook. Steve Kerr was a head, oh, they, he was a rookie head coach when they won went to the finals, or they won. Yep. Yeah, yeah, he games. was. Yeah. Okay, but that came after being a general manager. Mm-hmm. That came after exactly. Brock. That came the after, right after broadcasting like JJ Reddick. So there was some time where he got to develop relationships and prove, you know, his wherewithal. And then being mm-hmm. a general manager really prepped him because now you're telling people what to do. JJ Reddick, I mean, I think host doing a podcast and stuff like that and doing what we're doing here, I really believe that that has some say so in, you know, running a media company. That's a big deal. That's a, right. a major deal. So for JJ, JJ Reddick has a lot of pluses going in his direction. Now, I think the Steve Nash thing, I can't make it. I know we can't make it about race or whatever people hate to do that, but you I have think, to. Like, yeah. you have to, man. You yeah. have to. You're saying, saying you can't, saying you can't make it about race, saying you can't make it about race is just as extreme as saying I'm colorblind to the situation. <laughs> like, come on, man. You have to. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like you were saying, it's other people that had a learning tree. Look at, uh, look at Udoka. He came from the pop. The pop tree. Then I think he went to the uh, I think he was on the Nets before he went to uh, no, nah, he was part of the Nets. He was somewhere else before he went to the Celtics. Yeah, he was on the Nets. You so, uh, yeah, there's been there's been learning trees for players. I don't think I just don't think what kind of precedent would it be for a guy who to a role player who ain't really never outside of outside of this fame he's getting now off of a podcast. When have we talked about JJ Redick this much? Nah, never. Outside of his college career, yeah, if nah. that. yeah, never. But I, I, but, um, cause he, but again, he like Pat McAfee in a in a in a, right. in a different kind of way. He mm-hmm. earned his he earned his his way his stay in the media world. Mm-hmm. I think there's a a certain middle of the pack when you're a head coach or all these administrative positions to be in. Because Tom Thibodeau was on ESPN at a certain point. Uh, Stan mm-hmm. Van Gundy's now on ESPN. Mm-hmm. So this is part of, I think, the new way of being a coach. Like all that, you know, being a part of a a fraternity, that makes sense also because it helps you. Even looking at Holzer in uh, in Milwaukee just got canned. He was part Mm -hmm. of the – He came from the pop tree. From the pop tree. So – but I I do – I do – I don't think there's any way that the Raptors are going to – I think a major factor is going to be the Steve Nash thing and then the white and black thing. Masai Ujiri is African. Masai Ujiri went through that uh, public – like uh not in, I don't call it embarrassing. I don't know how embarrassing it was for him, but it was disturbing when he was trying to get to the court when they won the yeah finish. in the finals. Yeah. So I think symbolically, it might weigh a lot. It would have like for me, JJ Reddick would have to impress the shit out of him in, a, in an interview because of everything you're saying. It has there's it holds weight to it. It's very polarizing for him to be as a head coach, and you're going to be in these head coach fraternities when. There's no way Popovich and these guys haven't spoken to Jerry. Jerry West is somebody you might have to deal with. Right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, you can't, you can't, like, at some point, knowledge has to come into play when you get in that position like that. You say something as dumb as he said, him and Chris Bosch said about Bill Russell, then these dudes check you. Like, everybody saw it. You say nothing. They're going to think, you're soft. Yeah. They don't think you're soft. You ain't even stick up for yourself. You said nothing. So well, I don't think that they're gonna think they're soft, but there's still gonna be contention there. But I'm sure business is business. Like yeah. Jerry West 
and J.J. Reddick at that point, J.J. Reddick has already proven he ain't got to prove nothing to anybody. Right. But J.J. Reddick at that point will have to persevere over, over these these Yeah, stigmas. what they said, yeah. And, and that's where I think if you do watch him, I think he does compartmentalize everything. Like, that's what he does. I think he's mm-hmm. very good at that and speaking on, on these things. So if if... Like I'm, a, I like him. I'm a fan of his. Yeah, I like JJ. I like yeah, JJ outside I, of our thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so I think you know, and then um, Richard Jefferson shouted him out and, and gave him, a, a, I guess, a, a vote of um of confidence in public. He tweeted something mm-hmm. out for him. But I think these things matter for him. Like a lot of this is just us being fans and just being able to vocalize whatever we're saying, whatever we yeah. feel. But J.J. Reddick, I, I, there's no way possible. If if he was even that close to being a head coach for the Raptors, they, like th- this doesn't factor into uh, Masai Ujiri's decision. Yeah, I think it's just him being him being in talks, him being in talks with the Raptors should uh, be taken just as seriously as uh, Becky Hammond being the coach. They've been talking about that for damn near a decade. They're never. I'm I'm not trying to sound misogynistic. I'm sorry, like. I don't think there should ever be a woman coach in the in the NBA. Like, how would that look? Like, come on, like these are grown men here. Like, these are grown black men. How is that going to look? A white lady telling them pros what to do. That's not gonna look good. That's not a good look. And we in the world of optics, how is that gonna look? I'm pretty sure that's what they want for a white lady to tell them what to do, but that's not gonna work. But again. You have to be ill, like, yeah. like for like for you to say that. Even me, even me right now, I feel like, oh shit, we getting kicked off YouTube after that one, right? Yeah. But to be honest, that like we can't run from the reality of that is part of the what it looks like. And I think if she is that good, then they're gonna have to hire her because someone who's able to 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 circumvent all of that, to know what's in front of them, and still say, yo, I see, I get all that, but I don't care. Like yeah. I don't, I don't. See, and again, that's why I asked yesterday, yo, how do we know who's a uh, who's a good head coach candidate or not? We got to see. We got to see. We right. Gotta, yeah, facts. And she, but she's in the WNBA now. They won a chip, didn't they? I don't, I, I don't even know. Is she still a coach? I, th- I think she went to Vegas. Yeah. No, so, no. Nah, I think she's not on the Spurs coaching staff no more, is she? No, no, no. Because she's a head coach at, at um for, for one of the um WNBA teams. And oh, again, okay. but I think these are little things that, I, I we had their honest thoughts, and I think yeah. it's honest for us to have about her. And it's not about bashing women; it's about, or it's really about bashing dudes. Cause right. we, cause we look at it like you gotta you be an ill it. chick. Oh <laughs> yeah. God, you agree? Yeah. you gotta you gotta be an ill chick to come in here and tell twenty four dudes what to do. Right. It's just we live in that world where, where everything is changing. Women didn't have as many jobs 50 years ago. Now they're mm-hmm. in the same place as men, and they're going to tell men what to do in the sports world. That has never happened before. Right. So exactly. it is new. So all these thoughts, they're going to sound crazy if you take them out of context and go, look at these two misogynistic idiots. Like, right. ah, that's a real thing for, for Becky Hammond, who probably deserves that she Toronto job. Anybody, yes. she's, been in, she's been in talks for like 10 years. Like. Come, and, and just off of candidacy alone, off the fact they keep that cosign, the Greg Popovich tree. Facts. There and and to your point, that's the reason why she hasn't gotten a job. Because yeah. of that. It has to be. There's no way that that Budenholzer, who we all were just like, yo, why is he a coach? Yeah. yeah. There's no way yeah. <laughs> you can't give her a shot. The same way I was saying before, yo, I don't mind Doc Rivers being average and, he, and him being messing up like this because now it gives us the average black dude as a head coach, finally, as opposed mm. to having all these white coaches, it doesn't make sense. Like, never recycling coach, yeah, like, we were just talking about this not too long ago with uh, Dan Tony, like, these Dan Tonys, these Rick Carlisles, it's the same thing with players, like, some players are staying too long, like, some players, the same thing with coaches, the players, coaches are staying too long, we need new coaches, Dan Tony should be gone. Carlisle should be no. gone. How long he been in the league? Damn near 30 years. Only thing no. I the only you, player, the only are you crazy older, yeah. Like, what is Indiana doing? Indiana not going nowhere no time soon. They basically a funnel for other teams. Nah, I think Indiana. How many good, how many good players Indiana then gave up since Larry Bird? They gave up Kawhi, PG, Malcolm Brogdon, Zabonis. None, none under call out except Sabonis was there, but I, they still did pretty well. They got a Halliburton, and again, they're a small market team. And Indiana, the state, the basketball, like I think he he's a smart 
head coach. Rick Carlisle has never, you know, he butted heads with. Yeah, he ain't really. Guards. Yeah, I, I, I'm gonna give Carlisle a benefit of the doubt, though. But when you win one championship, we could put him in the same category as Doc Rivers. Hell no. Hell yeah. to the no. Yeah. He had that. He had that Pistons team prepped up until Larry Brown got there and they traded for Rashi Wallace. No way. They went to like four four conference finals with him, if I'm not mistaken, in a yeah. row. Yeah, nah, uh, this, yeah, it is kind of different. Nah, yeah. way different. Doc Rivers Rick had hell of talent. Hell yeah, Rick, yeah. Rick Carlisle Thanks. is that deal. And then he went yeah. to the Pacers, and the only reason why they didn't win and win the championship because Ronald Tess went to the stands. Yeah. Let's not forget. Maybe Rick yeah, Reggie, Reggie would have got his chip that year for sure. Maybe so. Any team, any team that would have came out of the East in 2004 was going to beat the Lakers. Right, but everybody just needs a chance because where did Rick Carlisle was on the well, the Boston Celtics bench, and then he did he came come from the Larry Brown tree? Did I he, think so. He, I think every, so. Everyone yeah. pretty much comes like Popovich comes from the Larry Brown tree. There's a lot the Larry Brown tree is heavy too. But again, that would be that one of those branches is Becky Hammond. And if that's a bigger reason, that's why I wanted to talk to you, especially. Yeah. That's a bigger, the bigger reason why. Those two things, what is the coach fraternity that JJ Reddick is a part of? So that's politics. Right. And also what's also political is yo, um, half the fans hate your guts because you call their favorite players, you know, uh plumbers and whatever you co-sign right. that right. so that yo but that i think what you're saying and was shout out to school what y'all are saying there's merit to it but i think it would take an exceptional dude like even you though because i think if you, when you hear him talk he seems pretty exceptional facts yeah i'm, I'm actually i'm not even a rockets fan i'm excited for next year for them right to see same way with um in a similar way with when rick Carlisle went from the Pistons to the Pacers. Then he went to the Mavericks. It was in you know similar fashion because we've seen the talent there as a coach. Like, yo, you're winning though. You know what yeah. I mean? So with Udoka, yo, we hope to see him. We hope to see him winning though. Yeah, I don't think. I mean, how it's looking, I don't think Harden coming back. If Philly, how Philly playing? I don't. I know we got the rumors. I don't think Harden coming back though. They gonna draw somebody with Udoka as the coach though. Philly's winning though. Yeah, I know. I'm saying like, if Philly win, I don't think. Harden is going to uh, Houston. Going back to Houston. Ah, uh, okay. Well, yeah. I appreciate you jumping on. It was short. It was short. Uh, short and sweet. Oh, short God. and sweet. And we never do no no uh, no Wednesdays. But that was a hot topic. And I wanted you to get that off because you know the the group chat is great. But then we got to put that in the post. We get the engagement. Yeah, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it sounds like cheap uh, promotion, but I don't care. With content, we got to man. We got to. <laughs> hey, thank you. We got to. <laughs> anyway, Rockstar Mel hates this music. But guess what? Probably later on we can watch the game. I'm, I'm gonna watch the the the, the the Knicks live later on. All right, yeah, I'm gonna be in there for sure. So you already know. Peace, man. See you later.